I think I see what the symbols in the stained glass mean now. Let's see. Purple rose. Hold diamond. Key of queen. But 
Where have I seen a purple rose? And what's a diamond key? Looks like a keyhole of some sorts. Looks like a keyhole of some sorts. The diamond! Whoa! Will you look at that sparkly rock? And me without my sunglasses. Hi, Lisa. How did you get in here? I followed you, of course. Turns out a nosy goody two shoes detective is good to have around after all. Now, why don't you toss me that big honkin' diamond so I can blow this popsicle stand and never set foot in Lamo, Wisconsin again? Lisa, you must be kidding me. 
This diamond belongs in a museum in France. Yeah? Well, I belong in the lap of luxury, and that diamond's gonna get me there. Hasn't anybody ever told you to mind your own business? Oh, many times. Well, maybe this time you'll learn. My eyes! Don't worry. My spicy devil villain Venom won't last for long. But I'm afraid by the time you get your eyes back, you'll have missed my grand exit. <coughs> so you're the one who trapped me in the elevator. Ooh, you are a smarty pants. But let's not forget about your little frostbite incident. I'm the rotten friend who locked you outside too, you know. Just trying to keep you on your toes, Nancy. Didn't want you to get soft on your vacation. Why did you leave Jacques' medallion at Hotchkiss's room? <coughs> and Hotchkiss's medallion out in the shed? To spread suspicion around, of course. You know, to play with your mind. Plus, I was at a dead end. I got the two messages from the stained glass window, but then what? I knew you would figure it out, so I decided to put the medallions in your hands and let you lead the way. Why did you have to vandalize that beautiful library? Just a little translation mix-up. When I read the message from Hotchkiss's medallion, I thought it meant Diamond of Misery in the library. Whoops, <laughs> guess I went a little overboard looking for it in there. Anyway, enough with the questions, Nancy. You'll just have to read the rest in the papers. I've got to stop her. Ah! Help! Get me out of here! It stinks down here. It's all moldy. Darn you, Nancy Drew. You're the worst friend a diamond thief could ever have. Dear Dad, to think I almost became friends with a diamond thief. Everyone at Wickford Castle is resting easier now that Marie Antoinette's journal and her famous diamond are safe and sound. The journal, the diamond, and the medallions are all going to be featured in a new Marie Antoinette exhibit in Paris. And it looks like everyone will be rewarded. <laughs> Except Lisa, of course. First, she missed her plane to Rio. And now she's going to be charged with attempted grand theft. Professor Hotchkiss is thrilled because the French government has granted her permission to publish Marie's journal in the U.S. before it gets returned to France. This ought to help prove her theory about Marie's character once and for all. Thanks to Jacques and his great-grandfather's efforts to find the journal, the Brunet name is being celebrated all over France. In the meantime, Jacques and Isabelle have eloped. It's so romantic. I showed Dexter the poem that Ezra Wickford wrote him, and he was relieved to know that his old pop didn't carry any hard feelings to his grave. All the talk shows want Dexter to tell his story on national television, but he keeps turning them down. I guess he doesn't want to be famous or infamous. But when Christy Lane called and asked Dexter to be her business partner, he accepted. With her business sense and Dexter's expert knowledge of the castle, I think they'll make a great team. So, you know what they say, Dad. Il n'est jamais trop tard de changer l'histoire. It's never too late to change history. Me, I'm determined to go out and enjoy this snow before some other case comes up.